Good afternoon. My name is Gargi Trichel, and I am one of the District Family Engagement Coordinators. On behalf of the Family Engagement Team, I want to welcome you to our Secondary Family Wellness Forum. Over the past few weeks, our team has heard from so many parents who are looking for resources to support the emotional and mental wellness of their students and families. You have sent us your questions, and to best inform and support you, we have gathered together presenters today who will be able to provide you with information, tools, and resources. I wanted to let you know that the question and answer function is open to you today. Randy Peterson and Eric Ferguson from our SEL curriculum development team will be responding to your questions. And if there is a comment that they don't get to during this session, if you are able to provide us with your email in the chat, you will receive a follow-up from an appropriate department after the forum. Also, please note that the recording of this presentation will be posted on the BSD website. Let's begin by introducing our presenters today. We are excited to have partnership in BSD between district staff and community partners. Our first presenter today is Wendy Powell. Wendy is our secondary school social emotional learning curriculum developer. Prior to this role, she was a building instruction coach and before that, a middle school science teacher at Chinook Middle School. Wendy is also a product of the Bellevue School District. In addition, both of Wendy's parents were Bellevue School District educators. Her mom was a school counselor at Sammamish and Bellevue High Schools, and her father was a science teacher at Sammamish High School. Our next presenter is Tori Markham. Tori wears many hats in the district. She is a district health and PE curriculum developer, a PE specialist at Bennett Elementary School, and she teaches summer school health. Additionally, she has coached various high school sports in the district for the past 15 years. Her partner is a counselor at Interlake High School, and they have four children, two who attend Bellevue Elementary Schools. Up next, you will hear from Maya Verguin. Maya is a National Board Certified School Counselor and has been with the district since 2007. She has worked at Sammamish and Interlake High Schools, and this year is on a special assignment as one of the Mental Health Assistance Team Counselors at Interlake. Maya was born and raised in Hawaii, but spent kindergarten and then grades 10 through 12 in the Bellevue School District as a student. Our community partners today are Colleen Kent, a behavioral health support specialist for Youth Eastside Services. Colleen is a licensed mental health counselor and child mental health specialist. She has worked in schools in Tacoma and in the peninsula, along with schools in the Bellevue School District since 2000. Sam Sturgeon is also a behavioral health support specialist with Youth Eastside Services. He is currently supporting Bellevue High School, Interlake High School, and Bellevue Big Picture School. Finally, today we have CJ Ellsworth, who is the program manager and licensed marriage and family therapist and supervisor in child and family behavioral health program at CMAR Community Health Center. Her work has a strong emphasis on delivering mental health services to families in the Latino community and children in foster care. I will let Wendy start us off today. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this forum. I am so delighted that you're here. And even though I can't see you, which is kind of weird. <laughs> um, but one thing that came out of a lot of the questions that um, were brought to our attention and submitted was around emotions. And um, emotions in our children, but also in ourselves. I think we all recognize that we've been on a roller coaster over the last um, couple of months. Um, roller coaster where, you know, feeling one thing in one moment and many things in the next moment. Um, and just knowing that, that we're all in this and we're kind of all experiencing this together um, is really helpful. Um, one strategy, if you're really feeling strong emotions or if your children are feeling strong emotions, um, one strategy that is useful for little kids all the way up to um, me, uh, adults, um, is to name it, we say name it to tame it. So when you can name your emotion, um, you're actually moving yourself out of your amygdala part of your brain and into your prefrontal cortex 
And that can really help to um, make the emotion not feel so big. You can go to the next slide, Gargi. So once we name our emotions, um, we, we sometimes want to decide that we don't really want to sit in that in that place. And so we think about ways that we can shift our emotions. And here are some strategies um, that are helpful in shifting. Um, breathing, um, practicing mindfulness, mindful breathing, having some positive self-talk, being distracted by books and puzzles, although they're hard to find nowadays, um, going out for a walk, experiencing nature, practicing gratitude, and even just using humor. A good laugh is really a good um, mood shifter. You can go to the next slide. So there were a few questions about how to about hope and how to instill hope. And it's really hard to stay hopeful right now. I think that we we all have find ourselves in that same having that same question. So keep in mind that hope doesn't mean that everything is going to work out exactly the way that we want it to. And hope doesn't really mean that the problem is going to go away. Instead, I like to think of hope as um, it's what keeps us going in the face of adversity. Um, something, maybe some things, maybe even lots of things will be different or even lost, but there's still good reason to push through. I think of the best way to instill hope is to care deeply, and you all clearly care deeply because you're taking time out of your day to be in this space with us, is to focus on the possibility. Even when the going gets tough, um, you know, it's important to um, think about not letting skepticism take center straight stage and try to focus on the positive instead. And the last um, thing that I think helps to instill hope is to really just speak from your heart Sharing and modeling with our young people right now is so vital. Um, I would say there's a lot of learning going on and we're learning from each other. And so I think that is another way to keep hope um, alive and, and to foster hope. You can go to the next slide. There were a lot of questions about motivation how to help kids stay engaged. And this is staying engaged both academically, um, using our live team um, classes, as well as just staying motivated in general. And I think this question, as I was starting to look at all the questions coming in about this, and I was thinking back to when I was teaching eighth grade science, and it seemed like at, you know, in, at spring in, with eighth graders, there was always a question about how to, how to motivate um, children at that age. So um, I think this is especially relevant right now with, with going through COVID and, and shifting to this remote learning environment. And one way that I think is really helpful to stay motivated is to stay connected, um, especially with families, but also with friends. You can go to the next slide. Developmentally, um, students, adolescents, peer relationships is so important to them. It is their social currency. Um, it, this, in these times, kids are feeling especially isolated from their friends. And, um, and it's really hard to make connections in a virtual environment. I don't even, I can't even see your faces right now. So it's really hard for me to know if you're, that, if you're out there. And um, for our students, that's even more so. Um, so, you know, for younger kids, you can do things like setting up virtual play dates and having some activities for them. For older children, that's a little more challenging, but it's not impossible. I would say to encourage and help them set up um, different game nights with friends, um, setting up a trivia, um, a PowerPoint trivia, um, and, and trying to, you know, stump their friends or using the game Heads Up or um, Jackbox TV has been a real hit in my family with my nephews. Um, so, you know, doing things like that to try to encourage students to um, connect with each other. And then also, I know that a lot of the schools are really exploring some of the possibilities of using um, the team's environment 
for connecting peers outside of their normal classrooms. Um, so reach out to your school and ask, you know, if there's opportunities. I know there's a lot of clubs and activities that are really starting to think about how they can be curious and creative with using this online platform. Um, and now I'm going to show you some resources how to explore more. So bear with me because we're going to go live to um, my screen. I'm going to share my screen. And so hopefully this is going to work pretty simply. So um, ready and I'm going to share this. So hopefully are you seeing this? Could Gargi, can you give me a thumbs up? Is it all good? Well, hopefully it's all good. I guess somebody chime in if it's not if you're not seeing the BSD website. So this is you're the BSD. Good. Oh, great. This is the Bellevue School District website that I'm showing you here, and I wanted to show you how to navigate for to some of the um, resources. There are a ton of resources and it can actually be overwhelming. So I'm just going to show you a couple and then I believe Randy and Eric are going to pop some of these links directly in the chat feature so that you can just go directly there. But if you're from on the Bellevue the School District, the links will actually be available in the PowerPoint that we post at a later point. OK, perfect. So um, from here, if you go to this blue bar in the very top, this is going to take you to all things um, wrapping around COVID. And this is pretty much our our main page where you're going to find a lot of the information. When you click on that page, there's um, quite a lot of um, information about support but if you scroll down, and there's some great phone numbers to take advantage of, but if you scroll down, there's all these learning resources, all these different resource um, tiles, or I call them, um, you know, these squares. So we have three that I'm gonna just call out today. One is the remote learning plan. The other one is this well-being tab. And I'm actually gonna share another within the remote learning plan these learning resources. So this is going to be in the giving us the same information to the same space as this one is as well. So if I click on learning resources and um, there's some more information, here's that learning plan in the green bar. But if I go down to middle and high school, this is going to take me to this landing page. There's some really um, good links and helpful information. But as you scroll down, these learning notebooks are filled with resources. I mean, almost to the point that that's overwhelming. But one area that I want to just particularly uh, point out is the social emotional learning page. By the way, if you need help in math or health or science, um, you can click on those other links as well. But in here is what's called OneNote. Now, you may not be familiar with OneNote, but I can guarantee you your child is. So if you are um, kind of lost or you don't really know how to navigate this program, please ask your child to help you because they will know it like better than I do. So this happens to be the social emotional learning uh, page. And within this page, you'll see um, information about what is social emotional learning, how it's defined, um, how the state defines it, different helpful um, uh, links to um, uh, briefs that they've published. But I put in here a cell resource tab, and this is going to take you to this page over here on that is on the um, left hand side. Same thing. And here are a whole slew of informational resources that you can use, some of which actually are some activities that you can do at home. The new, I put this one just in last week, um, are supporting learning from home that uh, webinars that were produced by um, the OSPI, which is the state superintendent's office. Um, these are really awesome. If you have the time, um, I would highly recommend them. And then one thing that I just wanted to point out here is the cell parent educator guide. These are activities and they actually list them out by grade level. And so you can look for your child's banded grade level. And if you have children, say in elementary school as well as high school and middle school, um, there's some things that cross over K through 12. 
So those are just some of the resources. I think we're going to share a little bit more on the resources as we go further, but I just wanted to point those out to you and have fun exploring. Don't get overwhelmed. And I'm going to turn it over to Tori Markham now. Hi, everyone. Um, so I don't know if we can kind of go back to the PowerPoint here. I am seeing my colleagues. <laughs> um, um. Wendy, I think you need to ch um, release control. <laughs> you can wave I, to everybody. I, I don't know how to do that. I don't have a release Darby, control. Can you put the PowerPoint back up? <laughs> Isn't it I, so ironic? I'm actually covering like instructional stuff and technology problems. So <laughs> as you can see, we uh, are all in it together with trying to figure out this whole remote learning and connections thing. So. Um, so I'm just here to touch upon. There's been a little bit of curriculum and instruction questions. Uh, not going to go into a huge amount of that, but just as it relates to emotional well-being, um, I do know that as the health and PE person, you know we really are emphasizing physical activity, of course, activity logs, uh, how to create personal fitness things, um, and this is K-12, um, teaching kids how to incorporate uh, sound nutritional habits and getting them out of sleep, um, teaching them how to, you know, put down to your device before sleep time, um, balancing technology. What does that look like? I think that, you know, the American Academy of Pediatrics has come up with all sorts of um, things uh, in the past about screen time. And then all of a sudden we're in this remote world where screen time is pretty much all everybody has to communicate. So, um, so yes, so it's a different realm. So curriculum instruction wise, uh, there really is no answer. I wish teachers had like this magic wand where they could wave and make every parent feel like the stellar teacher and teach them everything that they can do at home. And I told my kids, I'm going to be the worst substitute teacher you'll ever have and make you appreciate your teachers just even that much more. Um, so if all I can say is that if you have an issue with uh, the learning, with keeping up with your kid, not um, maybe not doing the work or telling you they did when maybe they didn't um, to just check in with the teachers, especially the teachers. Just their whole job is to make sure that all the kids are safe and that they're checking in um, and want to make sure that they're learning. And so if that's not happening, um, the, the biggest thing is compassion. And so that's what the kids can hold on to. And so the team's meetings, that's kind of what they're set up for. So curriculum instruction wise, uh, there was some questions about how we're addressing the kids emotional needs with that. Um, I know that every teacher is getting some of these SCL things that Wendy is pushing out in the secondary and kind of opening up with some of the uh, and more engagement to spark kind of joy in the learning a little bit more as much as possible as it can be remote. So. Um, Maya wanted to touch a little bit on the grading aspect of that. I'll let her jump in real quick. Yep. So um, the we know that the we're not going to talk a lot about the grading today, but um, what I do know is that the whole um, impetus of grading came from direction from OSPI, which was in this time of this pandemic to do no harm to students. So we don't know what every student ex is experiencing. Um, the district worked really hard to ensure that no harm was happening in this. Um, if students at the end of um, the semester, um, if they're in a high school course or in a high school credited course in middle school um, and they earn an incomplete in the course, they will have opportunities for improvement or to complete the course towards earning a passing grade. Um, and that's the entirety of the grades that we're going to focus on today. Other than um, if you believe that your child is being asked to do way too much, we would recommend that you reach out to a counselor or administrator at your student's school so that we can help to problem solve. Um, what we learned um, from outcomes after Hurricane Katrina is that the students who were most successful in the future and that fared the best were those that were made to feel safe and those that um, were they were focusing far more on the social emotional pieces um, rather than um, the fear, which was if they missed this period of time academically that they would be absolutely um, their long term impact would be have 
um, significant negative outcomes. And that just wasn't seen to be true, um, that the future grades were able to help catch them up on the parts that weren't learned that particular year. And instead, it was very much more about the social emotional learning, which is why we really wanted to focus on student well-being today. Um, yeah, great. And, you know, I, I think along with that, there was some questions about what, like incompletes and third quarter reports came out and oh my gosh, my kid was the stellar student and now they're getting an incomplete. <laughs> what is up with that? And again, just reach out to teachers. Sometimes there's just a miscommunication. Sometimes things weren't turned in. Teachers are very compassionate with that. Um, so with the next slide with the technology part of it. So I also, as part of the health curriculum, we work with a program called Restart. It's located in Fall City and they just do like technology and a technology addiction. Um, and so a lot of tech issues have come up during this time and me as a mother too, I'm like, how much is most more technology? I think we all sit our computers more than any other time. Um, so how to address technology issues when kids like have to redo their work? Actually, right before this call, my kid had done an online quiz and forgot to turn it in, forgot to press the, the submit button. And he's like, uh, I, mom, I totally did it. And I'm sitting there as a mother like, yeah, right. I've gone through this for like, what, seven weeks now. And so, um, you know, that happens and teachers are so forgiving now. They're really learning. They've been learning along the way about the balance of the amount of work and what is possible, what's not possible. If you don't have technology available to you, if you're having troubles with the internet connections, the speed, I know in my house, if there's four people online, then technology is very slow. So those are all things the students have the help desk available just for students. And then of course there's our um, employee and uh, community uh, help desk programs that also help. Each school has a help desk person to help you with any technology issues as far as accessing any of the Microsoft programs. Uh, if a kid doesn't have a district issued computer yet, that's something that would be very, um, very good for them to have just to be able to access everything that the BSD has. Uh, they have each of the icons of the apps that the kids need right on the desktop. So um, I had we had some questions about screen time and mental health and that is a huge thing. As a parent myself, I really worry about that. Like, oh my gosh, my kid, I like limited it to like maybe 30 minutes a day and they're on for like four and a half hours. Um, so it's uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics. Again, this is kind of what we base our research on. And they had even said that screen time, uh, it's a big worry, but don't worry about it during COVID. Um, the main thing is, is you want to make sure that it's not interfering with their mental health. So sleep habits, nutrition habits, um, socialization habits. If you start to see uh, differences in their behavior, then it's just time to have a conversation with them. Um, of course, anything academic is well worth it to them actually during this time because it kind of keeps them engaged and excited about the learning. Um, I find myself as a parent getting a little bit pessimistic about the whole technology thing, but uh, what what I need to do as a parent is be more optimistic and look at the, the positives in it and encourage the positive applications that are out there to help students learn. Um, as far as like the social media can be equated to cyberbullying and then, you know, the news media can uh, skew a story, um, especially about COVID. And then you see screen time with TV goes up because now they don't, they want to get off their homework and they want to watch their TV. Um, so that, you know, is equate to bad uh, eating habits in the past. Um, using technology at night, like the cell phones and the iPads at night, um, has been researched to lack of sleep. So, of course, all those things are still in place. So, if you want to monitor technology still, I would encourage you to kind of talk about technology in your house and create a routine and kind of a rules thing that you guys are going to abide by. Like, you know, an hour before sleep time, turn off the technology. Make sure that your brain can kind of settle down into a sleep pattern. Otherwise, it's going to hardwire itself right back up and wake yourself up again. Um, and to an engaged mode. Um, again, what, watching TV, maybe talk about snacking, uh, make sure that you're actually getting the exercise during the day. And you know, that's another part of the academic part is with this high technology time um, and less sports, 
Um, like we cleared our calendar. Our kids are not doing their after school sports or activities that we normally do. And so just to make sure that they get outside and get that oxygen and blood flowing to their brains, it's going to help them focus on their schoolwork and it's going to give them relief from their eyes and the sitting at the technology. And, you know, ultimately, as we adults can feel that on our backs of like, oh, my gosh, I've been sitting all day on a computer. Um, so the main thing is, is find the routine. Kids are going to be cranky. They're going to be, you know, maybe a little bit clingy. They're going to uh, have different sleep habits, different eating habits during this time. All things that we parents are, um, at least me, just kind of sometimes freak out about their health. But if we just communicate and create a routine with them, talk to them about COVID. I know the teachers, as far as the curriculum instruction part, are not offering a lot of information on COVID because there's not a lot of information out there. It's just too new. We don't want to provide them with wrong information and especially, especially any values based uh, information as far as how your family deals with it. So but they are curious and sometimes they are worried. So the more that you can talk about it, the better. Um, the next slide. I think we can go to the next slide on celebrations, I believe. Um, so I am going to lend this into my to also talk about celebrations, but I think as we kind of focus on sometimes uh, how we connect using technology to connect ourselves better, as Wendy kind of mentioned above, I know that sometimes um, doing a little bit of projects together and like my kids we did Mount St. Helens and so we interviewed someone from each side of the state using technology and that media time and so that was kind of a celebration of something that's going on today um, you know my neighbor celebrated her 15th birthday and they had like a little parade of cars go by and just honk the horn and wave to her so finding those celebrations and kind of connecting those to mental health which Maya is going to go into now. Uh, let me go live. OK, um, so I'm I th there were a few questions. So what we did is we I took the questions that came in from the surveys and lumped them together. So one question said, how do I give my child closure for this school years? And how do I find room for joy when the loss of celebrations, promotion activities, graduation prom are happening everywhere? Um, and things like how do I create celebrations for important events? And I know Tori just touched on the drive by um, birthday party that we've seen things like that that have happened. Um, there's also uh, there was something uh, for seniors specifically called graduate together that was broadcast on many channels this weekend. It's available on YouTube as well as on on demand on a lot of different networks, um, but it was a tribute to the class of 2020 for seniors. Um, but one of the things um, that you can do, especially if it's um, a younger student, is reach out to see if this if the teacher is doing a special closing for the end of the school year for the class. Maybe they're going to do a Zoom together, not a Zoom, I'm sorry, a Teams meeting together, um, talking about um, closing and maybe there's a special celebration that they can put on, whether it's a class luau or something that is really kind of creating that sense of community. Um, or it's also an opportunity for you to create a special celebration just with your child for this milestone of another year completed. While it feels different than previous years because it absolutely is. Um, the most helpful thing that I believe that you can do to your child is to acknowledge what they're experiencing right now. Um, so we know that these times are filled with uncertainty and each of us process and experience this a bit differently. We are all trying to figure out together um, how to do this as we've never planned for an experience like this and we've never lived through one. Um, it's important to take care of ourselves, to pay attention to our needs, both the needs that you have as a parent and the needs of your student. Um, staying connected with friends and community can bring some great positive rewards. And while not in person now, it can be done through phone, social media, some of the games that Wendy mentioned and um, that Tori mentioned. Tapping into creativity can also be helpful, whether that's practicing an instrument, doing art, um, writing, listening to music, something that's really um, so those kind of self-care measures, um, right, to be creative outlets for your student. Um, we know that some of our students are experiencing some grief and loss in what they expected the end of this year to look like. And particularly so, we see that with eighth graders in their transition to high school and with seniors. As the end of their high school feels like all of a sudden it's not what they expected. Prom is different. Graduation is different. 
right? What they always thought was coming doesn't look the same. We are still, as each of our schools, working to create a really special celebration for students, but it is different. Um, so acknowledging that it's different and allowing your students some space to grieve that loss, that loss of expectations, right? Um, with it can come a great deal of emotions. While we are trying to support students in planning, what we can do to celebrate them and honor them, um, we've really, each of our high schools have worked with students to plan that um, and where they've been the leaders of that. Um, whether it's the senior year, end of middle school, or simply the end of the year, we also want you and your students to know that help is available if your students are feeling really sad. Um, above all else, for our students, we want them to know that we care about them, that they matter, that they aren't alone, and that we are here. Um, mental health and well-being of our students is of great importance to us. So if we can lend support, please reach out. They can reach out to their school counselors. They can speak to myself or one of the other MHAT counselors, which are at the four comprehensive high schools, um, to a teacher, or you can do so on their behalf as a parent if you're worried about them, and we'll check in with you or with your student to lend support. Some of the greatest resources that we have can be found in our community and in each other. Um, on the sites that uh, Wendy led us through earlier, there are a number of phone numbers listed for students. Um, one of those is a district um, monitored kind of crisis line that's operated during business hours and it's right on those COVID resources page. Um, but students also have um, on the counseling link um, from the district website, there's information for the crisis line, teen link phone number, um, means that students can text or call themselves. Um, and on the back of many of our student ID cards, it has a list of those phone numbers as well. So I bring that up not to try and invoke fear by any means, but we do know that with this unknown time, that this, the emotions that our students are experiencing is all over the place. And if this, if our students are in need of supports, we absolutely want them to be able to access those supports. Um, I do know that in King County, um, there has been a 300% increase in calls to the crisis line through this um, time of quarantine or stay home order, um, which is just mentioning the need, right? The need of young people and the need of people to feel like there's someone on the other line listening to their needs. So if there is a concern that you have about a student, feel free absolutely to reach out. If you don't know where to turn, by all means, you're more than welcome to reach out to me and I would help you to navigate the system. Another fantastic resource that we have is reaching out to our family engagement specialists, which are in each of our family connection centers because they are integral in our schools um, and uh, they can help you to connect also with your student school counselor as a first step and then figure out who's the next best person, whether that's one of us calling to check in or recommending that there's a check in with a pediatrician or maybe a connection with an outside agency or therapist, right? And all of that we can do collaboratively. Um, in addition to that celebration piece, right, it really is an opportunity though, like I said, um, to create kind of a different experience because this is different than any time we've been through. So if there is a chance to really just kind of have what's something special that you wanna do together to recognize the end of this school year. Another, um, uh, you can go to the next slide, Gargi. The next section of questions um, came up around um, some great unknowns and navigating the unknowns. So some questions that were raised were, um, how do I help my child to cope with the fear of the unknown? Um, what is the likelihood that school buildings will be open to support um, open gyms for students, athletes for fall sports or summer camps? What if parents don't know, feel safe to send kids back to school this fall? Or we have worked so hard to help our child with separation anxiety. We're looking for suggestions on how to maintain that for when the student does return to school, the physical school after being with family 24-7 um, for months. So here's a couple of navigating the unknown um, pieces that I can give you and recommendations. The one thing that we all know is how much we all don't know about what lies ahead. And while that feels maybe disarming to say, it's the truth. For some, this can be very stressful and anxiety inducing. 
for some it leads to a sense of isolation and some depressive concerns. But as we move through it, know that there's a lot of planning that's occurring right now at the district and state level, focusing first and foremost on your students' safety and well-being as we plan for what lies ahead. Um, in a session today with um, Chris Reichdahl, who's the the superintendent of public instruction at the state level, he made it very clear that the number one focus for re-engagement and planning for next year is first to focus on student well-being, to make sure that we're really connecting with students. So there is a lot of planning that's happening behind the scenes. A lot of it is waiting to find out as built uh, as as businesses begin to reopen, as kind of our society begins to reopen. What does this look like? How are we planning for the future? But we do know it's navigating the unknown right now. Um, for parents who don't feel safe um, to send their students back, I would absolutely reach out now to your student school counselor to begin processing that and planning for what lies ahead. And you know, opening that door is helpful just to have that conversation so that that's something that we know we're being proactive and planning for. You also, for the parent who reached out asking about the separation anxiety, um, now is another great opportunity to reach out to your student school counselor to begin processing and planning for this. If you have worked with an agency therapist, um, it would be really great to connect the agency therapist with your student school counselor um, with a release of information so that we can proactively plan for the future. So we together are kind of getting ahead of this so that when things do reopen, we already have a plan in place. Um, you can go to the next slide, Gargi. The next session really is like, where do we turn for help? So um, I already mentioned, you know, reaching out directly to your student school counselor. If your student is working with an agency therapist, it could be reaching out to that therapist or having your student do so. Um, if, you, if you don't know where to turn, by all means, you can reach out to the administrator in the building and they'll connect you. Same with the family engagement specialists. Um, any of us are, um, able to be resources to help you access the end goals, right? And so as a partnership within the schools, we all just want to help you get connected with the best person to help you. So reaching out to um, anyone in that building is going to funnel you essentially to the person who could best assist. And um, uh, you can go to the next slide, Gargi. OK, so the next um, items were really all about emotional health supports, family stress, et cetera, um, and then really questioning um, things that look along the lines of depressive concerns. So one question was, what kind of plan is in place for students to engage on how they're doing emotionally? Um, and this is part of the planning that will be occurring at the district and state level as per Reichdahl's recommendations um, for reentry as the primary focus. Um, and for right now, um, we have created um, sessions that are welcome for all of the high school students district-wide. Um, there's resilient sessions that are happening every Monday at 11 o'clock, except for this coming Monday because of Memorial Day. We're doing it on Thursday this coming week um, for the rest of this school year. And we had our first one this past Monday. In addition, we're doing um, togetherness Thursdays of just different activities trying to create some connectivity for students and a space for students to be able to drop in and join, and that's on Thursdays at two o'clock. Um, there's also additional things happening within individual classes and schools. Um, someone asked about how to handle being stuck in abusive homes, um, and if you are in need of someone to talk to, by all means, reaching out to the crisis line for support. Um, this is a very big concern at the state level, um, and one of the focuses for when they are reopening um, for more services, whether that's child welfare services, etc., to make sure that there is safety in place um, and that welfare checks can be something that continues. Um, there was a question about how to support children who may be mitigating the challenges of parental unemployment and or um, illness during their stress, um, illness um, and dealing with their stress and or students who are caring for younger siblings. So um, as someone who was a traditional school counselor for 13 years in Bellevue School District, I would absolutely say the more that you're communicating this information with someone, whether that's a family engagement specialist or the school counselor, 
that can, just the knowledge of what's happening means that we're able to join you in advocating for your child. So if you share this information um, with those that can be, whether it's the, the school counselor, um, a, a teacher, a case manager, they can help you problem solve and advocate for and with your students. Um, and it also is um, giving grace to your student and yourself in this space if this is your reality, right? Students level of functioning um, and being able to engage right now is there. It's on such a wide spectrum. Um, and that's why, again, the grading is ultimately set up in a do no harm measure. Um, but with more information, we absolutely are able to help you. Um, and we want to partner with your student and family in this stressor. So if a loss of um, the employment, right? That's an added stress within your family system and absolutely something that I know our family engagement specialists would want to know to also be a support system to you as well as school counselors. Another question was brought up um, about how do you address the feelings and fears of children who have fa families who um, have healthcare workers or first responders, frontline workers? Um, that's another really great question, and it's again in that kind of unknown and uncertainty because we know that because someone's on the front line doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to get sick or if they got sick that it means that it has significant or critical outcomes, but it really does mean that we know that some of our students are feeling much more afraid for their family members. And so maybe um, helping students to be able to have those conversations about those fears and or connect them up with a therapist if that's something that would be helpful for you. Um, and you can absolutely do that by connecting with um, your student's school counselor. Um, and then Gargi, you can go to the next um, slide. The last several um, questions um, all related to emotional health. And so I'm gonna just, Tori talked about this. Um, PBIS is something that we use in our schools to kind of create structure and routines, right? Um, and that's something that a lot of your students are very familiar with um, within our school settings. But it's also something that can be helpful in your home, setting some routines, whether that's bedtime routines, um, right? Sleep schedule, sleep hygiene. Um, one thing that's really helpful um, that uh, a lot of students that teach remind and reward expectations with behaviors um, is a notion or idea of five to one. So positive praise to a correction, right? That's something that um, is really helpful in behavior modification. So this slide is just showing you something that's used in schools. It's sometimes functional and there are days where you just have to say to yourself, if it doesn't work for your family to have that much structure today, that's okay and we're just going to not do it. Gargi, you can go to the next slide. So the last, um, this this whole idea of adult well-being, kids do better when the adults are doing better. And so it's giving yourself patience and grace in this unknown time. You are all doing the best that you can right now, and you're doing the best for your for your children. But one of the things that's super important is for you also to be taking care of yourself because then you're better able to support your child, right? Um, and so. We know, um, there's, I'm gonna go into these last few questions, but Gargi, you can go to the next slide. Um, we know that these next few that relate to emotional health, I'm gonna touch on them, and then I'm also gonna um, lob this to our community partner. And today we have um, an agency therapist from um, the and director from CMAR on the line with us, and I'm gonna have her speak to the emotional needs as well. But one of the questions came up about motivation, loss of physical activity or interaction with family, not leaving the house for weeks, poor social engagement with friends, losing interest in college. My teen refuses to discuss at all, so online and telehealth is impossible. Another question came up about what to do if a child is experiencing stress at levels that they may not recognize or be too obvious, that but they are experiencing symptoms like being unable to sleep, lack of motivation, and frustration with parents working at home. And then another question came up about how do you tell the difference between depression and typical teenage behavior, especially in times like this when isolation, boredom, lying in bed, are facing all of us. Most people are having some ups and downs during this time. So how do you talk to your teenagers, especially young teenagers, about depression so that they understand and are open to, dis to discussing when it is time to get outside help? 
Um, and then another last one was about loneliness, depression. So I'm going to touch on it and then I'm going to pass it to CJ. But um, there really is a wide range of experiences of emotions right now. And each student is somewhere on that spectrum of how they're doing. You will often see the most unedited version of their experience of emotion, whether it's agitation, withdrawn and um, anger exhibited, which is often a mask for sadness. And um, we are um, really wanting to make sure that um, students are able to access therapeutic interventions um, outside. And I know that our um, that CJ will be able to help weigh in about ways that they're connecting with students who who are struggling to, and refusing to do um, online or telehealth. Ultimately, we know that they need to engage um, for it to be successful, um, but we want to do our best to support you and your students in this. Um, the stress is absolutely off the charts for so many, whether it's the young people to the adults alike, trying to practice self-care and trusting your gut for when it is time to just say, today we cannot do the learning as planned and we're going to go with plan B is okay. Focus on what your student and family needs, whether they are speaking in words of action or in words. It is impossible to do it all and we know this. For working parents and students who are struggling, if you need to power down for the day, do it. And then try to re-engage. Have your student help you come up with activities of interest or pursue um, to pursue or possibly do something together. Um, it really is a continuum and there is no specific formula. If concerned though, please reach out. There is no problem in seeking support. On clinical interventions, it relates to the persistence of conditions or experience, but again, in this great unknown time, trust your parental gut and ask for help when you're worried. So, and the first line of that is asking through your school counselor and they'll connect you with agencies. Later in the presentation, we also have phone numbers for the community agencies that are partnered with us. And we have six different agencies that we as Bellevue School District have partnerships that come into our school buildings. But you also are able to access these outside of our school and through the summer when we really are less present and your student is in need of that support. So one of the best ways though um, in all of this is to reach out to your student school counselor um, and all of your sc student school counselor information is available if you access the Bellevue School District's website and you click on your student school um, there's a tab at the top of within your student school link that has counseling and it has the contact information for your school counselors our phone numbers are all forwarding to us in this time so with that, and very long-winded because I took on a lot of um, what we're most concerned about, which is that um, that real well-being in the clinical side, I would like to pass it now to CJ. Thanks so much, Maya. Um, I really want to come back to one of the topics that you mentioned, which is when kids are not engaging, and there were two different topics, when kids are not engaging online schoolwork and when kids are not engaging or willing to engage with, say, telehealth services. And that's one of the biggest shifts um, that we as therapists have really experienced in this um, pandemic life is we're trying to figure out how to reduce that risk by also offering counseling services virtually. And it's a whole new brave frontier for us. Some therapists have been doing it for quite some time and have a lot of wonderful tips and tricks that they have shared with us to try and make this a lot better for kids. We have found that um, in working with the adolescent population, there's a fair amount of kids that feel not quite as engaged as they would if they were coming in person and having a session with a real person. And I think this is um, kind of a wonderful note about how fearful we feel that kids will lose this sort of like person to person contact. But actually what we're finding is they are deeply, deeply sorrowfully missing being with other people. And when they are having significant challenges with depression, with anxiety, with just a really deep sense of loneliness, not being able to be around their peers like they normally would in a school setting. We really do want them to be able to have that possibility to process some of that information and develop some different coping skills that we can teach them in therapy. So using telehealth has really worked very well. We use um, lots of different agencies, use different forms. The primary one tends to be Zoom, it's password protected and encrypted. So um, privacy has definitely continued to be protected for these kids. 
the number one challenge that we notice is that kids don't like to see themselves on the video. <laughs> so we can certainly have them turn their video off. We can have them, you know, figure out a different thing to do. We came up with putting a post it over the small picture of their face on the video screen. So really they're just looking at their counselor instead because it's challenging. Who wants to be talking to themselves in what feels a little bit like a mirror seeing them? It's been disturbing, I think, for most of us adults who have had to have a lot of virtual meetings. So there are lots of different creative solutions that we're willing to try and figure out with some kids. And at the same time, we recognize it doesn't work for everybody. So make sure that if your child is completely adverse to having a video visit, it's a fair thing to actually ask the counselor that you're seeking therapy services from to say, this isn't working. Is there any possibility of seeing a therapist in person? Because one of the other parts of being essential health care workers is that we are actually making that service available, especially in crisis situations where a youth might be feeling suicidal, homicidal, their hearing voices, different symptoms that can be pretty scary for that individual and definitely for the parent who wants to support them too. So don't be afraid to ask. You might hear a no. That doesn't mean it's the end of the line. Most agencies and therapy settings are slowly opening back up with, um, with all of the different changes that are coming down about the slow progressive phases that are reopening. And at the same time, if there is concern for safety or risk, we want to know. That's where we are more than happy to provide a face-to-face -face service. We'll probably be wearing a mask, but other than that, we can go ahead and teach them some different skills. And going back to what Maya had highlighted, and I know you've heard throughout this presentation, there's a lot of unknowns, there's a lot of anxieties, and there's a lot of different ways that we can help people cope through it by talking about it by engaging in resources they haven't considered before, and by making sure that they're going back to their school counselor asking for resources and help. There's so many, and they are thrilled to go ahead and share them with you, and we are happy to be on the other end to try and give you some alternatives as well. Maya, are there other topics you'd like me to be able to chat about? or? Um, no, I would say the only other thing is like, um, helping for a parent to decipher between when it's a high level elevated stress and depressive concerns. But again, yes. I think there's no, this is what I said. I think that there's no harm in reaching out if you're even teetering yes. on that so that you're not the one as a parent having to make that decipher. If they reach out, you as an agency therapist or another me mental mm -hmm. health practitioner is probably best at helping to decipher where that balance lies. But And Maya, I love what you said earlier. let's see if we can get a reset tomorrow but definitely trust that gut if you're feeling pretty nervous and this is definitely not very typical of your kid even under a stressful situation trust that gut and there's no harm in asking for extra assistance or ideas or help colleen did you want to add anything I think there was some technical difficulties with um, two of our presenters having challenges getting in to the event, so we may not be able to hear from them. I do want to add one more thing, actually thinking about YES not being here or sound. I know that they would both speak to substance use services. Mm -hmm. And while CMAR doesn't provide those here on the east side, I know that YES and Sound both offer substance use evaluations for clients, for kids. And I would say if we are concerned that there's an increase in substance use, that's a really great resource. And I personally have been reaching out to them professionally and personally trying to give resources because this is an issue that's really increasing for adults and for kids right now, because when things are really hard, we do want to numb out a bit. And that doesn't mean that it's 
typical and normal and we want to encourage that. Instead, we want ideas and we also want to again look for those patterns. And if we need to reach out for help or we're really worried, those are two great local agencies to really lean on if you're concerned about your youth using substances right now. So kind of just uh, in closure with um, all of the mental health stuff, I know Gargi's going to just talk about some quick wellness resources, but um, I'm just going to give you a second just to read this quote. Uh, and this is apparent, like really hit me hard. And um, like I said, for those of you who joined a little bit late, um, I have four children, uh, seven, uh, 10 and twin four year olds. And I work a full time job plus another job. And my husband also works full time. And when asked to even just do this forum, I was a little taken aback because I don't feel like I have the research background expertise. I and searching for answers myself. I'm like, I'm an educator. There's got to be some research solution to all this. Um, and, you know, I'm used to researching and providing the research based information um, to help educate people. And I, in my own life, cannot find that balance of, you know, trying to be a teacher, trying to be a parent, trying to take care of the house, trying to be, you know, a great partner and somehow trying to manage to keep in touch with my friends for my own sanity, let alone my exercise habits have just gone out the door. So, um, you know, we're all just in this together and just know that whatever you are feeling, if you are a student or a parent or a relative or friend, that I think just reaching out and sharing those stories together and knowing that we can get through this, um, even in the own known by helping each other realize that we're not alone, um, to be able to embrace sharing your emotions and sharing your hardship so we can help each other. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're going through all this, that um, even as we all do this together, it <laughs> we wish we had a magic wand for you. So and, thanks for being with us today. And there is one thing I also wanted to add, you know, um, I am doing um, a mental health role this year. And one thing that I'm hearing from several students this year is that um, while they are home, they're finding more intentional time with parents and families, right? And they're actually, while in the past they may have resisted that idea, they are actually finding that to be something that they're really enjoying. And it's something that they're not just next to each other or just in the same room or just both busy. They are turning off things and spending time together. And that's something that we're seeing a positive that is coming out of right now. Or when people are going on a walk, even if they're crossing the street so that their neighbor feels safe as they're, you know, walking by and keeping their social distance, they're seeing people waving, right? So a little bit of that Seattle freeze, as we call it, seems like some of that may be melting off in this where it's people really looking out for one another. So it is as you're going through all of this hardship with your children at home with you, know that they also see you showing up for them. And that's something that I'm hearing from them on their end is that if you're putting aside things and just trying to also get some time with them, however that looks like, right, that is something that they are receiving, whether they're telling it to you or not. I want to share our thanks to Wendy and Maya and uh, Colleen and Sam. I'm sorry that our technical uh, difficulties prevented you from sharing your information with us today. And uh, I want to thank um, uh, CJ for joining us as well as Tori. And I hope that your present the presentation that we provided for you gave you some tools, information, and resources as we all experience the challenges and we search for the joys during this time. The Bellevue School District seeks to support each and every student and their families. And in addition to the resources touched upon by our presenters today, there are resources that families can connect to by calling our mental health and counseling hotline to speak with a BSD counselor. There's a nursing hotline to connect with BSD nursing staff and an essential resources hotline if you are in need of nutrition, technology, or child care information. You can also reach out to our community partners. There was a list prior of all of the 
agencies that Bellevue School District works with. And there's some uh, resources here for Youth Eastside Services and for CMAR Community Health Centers. Currently, the Bellevue School District also offers free grab and go meals for kids and teens under the age of 18 at seven locations, including Lake Hills Elementary, Telica Middle School, and Sammamish High School. And pre order meals are able to be delivered to 30 pickup locations. These meals can be ordered online or by phone, and there's more information available on the BSD website for locations and the schedule of delivery. The Bellevue School District is also providing limited child care for health care providers and first responders. You may email childcare at bsd405.org for more information, or call the Bellevue Boys and Girls Club for additional child care options. And finally, I'd like to invite Judy Huntsberger from our Family Connection Center to speak about the resources available there. Hi everyone, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Judy Huntsberger and I serve at Phantom Lake Elementary Family Connection Center and also support Tillicum and six other schools. I'm also the lead family engagement specialist and I just want the parents to know that uh, we are all in this together and that the family engagement specialists have resources that we can provide for you. So as you can tell, there's two emails on there. And if you email us, we will be glad to connect you with the appropriate um, family engagement specialist for your uh, child's school. So when you email us, please let us know uh, which school your child is going to, and we will connect you right away. And I'd like to introduce you now to Marie Forbes, one of my colleagues uh, from Family Engagement Specialists from Interlake. Um, thank you, Marie. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I just want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Marie Forbes, and I'm the Family Engagement Specialist for Interlake and International High School. Uh, I just want to let you know that I will be very happy to receive your emails in case you have any questions for me or you want to learn more uh, resources uh, that they can help you and your student um, in the future. Thank you so much and have a good evening. I want to thank you all for joining us today. This information will be um, made available on the BSD website. And if you have any questions, you can also email family partnerships at bsd405.org. Thank you very much.